We all know what symmetry is. Symmetrical planting may seem like the easiest way to achieve visual balance in a garden, but this design is very static. Usually you rely on a strong central focal point to hold visual interest. But the human nature in many ways is a paradox. We feel good. We feel comforted by predictability and yet we will eventually be bored by it. The Fibonacci spiral can be used to add an element of flow to a visual composition to make it more dynamic. If you don't know what Fibonacci spiral is, very briefly, it is a logarithmic spiral whose growth factor is phi, also known as the golden ratio. Okay, so we are going to start by drawing the Fibonacci spiral. So first we will draw a square. And then we will draw another square right next to it. Okay, and then we are going to draw a square on top. Okay, I'm drawing this roughly. And then we are going to draw a square to the left of what we've got. And then we are going to draw another square at the bottom. Alright, and then we are going to draw a square right here. So, now we are ready to draw our Fibonacci spiral. So we are going to start. If you have a compass, this is actually, it's better. I don't have a compass, so I will do my best to make um, circles. Uh, so basically if you had the compass you would put it here, uh, up to there, and then you would draw a quarter of a circle. Then we're going to continue this way and then you would move your compass uh, to this spot and draw another. Okay. And then we're going to do the same this way. And then the same like this. Okay. And then the last one here. I'm trying to swing my arm around like I would a compass. Oops. Now that I have this, and this is essentially what my backyard uh, dimensions or proportions are. So you can see that the concentration, like the heaviest uh, part of this is in this corner here that I drew. So let's say my gazebo is going to be right here. Okay, so now I see that if I want to balance this out, I need to have something on this side. Um, so essentially, let's say I put a garden bed here. I see that I need to have it come out like really, really far in order to balance out uh, this large structure. I'm not necessarily going to trace the spiral exactly. I am just going to use it as a guide to achieve visual balance. I'm going to place a willow here or a larger larger plant just to accentuate the fact that this this garden bed is coming out um, really really far I also wanted to have a pond in my garden I can again use the Fibonacci spiral to help me visually balance everything so I will draw a small spiral in this corner okay
So this is it. The pond, let's say the pond again, it's a very strong visually imposing structure. So I'm going to put it somewhere in this area. So let's say I will have my pond right here. I'm going to add some garden beds here. So I'm going to use, I'm going to be roughly tracing the outline of the two spirals for my garden bed. So let's say I have, have one like this. This is my garden bed. This is one. And on this side, I will kind of have a garden bed here. To just draw in the spirals just so that you can see them a little bit better. I'm going to draw some of these elements in just so you know you see a little bit better what I've got. We also happen to have a tree right here. Now that we have our visually balanced asymmetrical design, we can add some local symmetric elements. For example, I am going to add our four hostas on either side of the gazebo. Okay, they are kind of right here. And let's say our entrance to the gazebo is right here. I'm going to add uh, my two hostas. I have two smaller hostas on either side here also. And again, for some symmetry, I'm going to add a pergola on the opposite side of the gazebo entrance. Okay, and we are adding some localized symmetry or localized symmetrical elements um, just to make us feel at ease in our asymmetrical design. Uh, over here I do have my two clematises on either side of the pergola. So I'm going to add this in. I'm going to also try to insert some pictures of what this stuff looks like because this is my actual garden and this is just a sliding door. And so let's say, for example, I have this pond here. I'm going to also provide some symmetry on either side of the pond by using some symmetrical planting. So here I have my barberry. Let's say over here I'm going to add a tree. I'm playing around with the specific plants that I will have in these areas. But the basic design is uh, pretty much this. So when you come in from here, from the, our side door, you do see the gazebo. The gazebo is a very, very large structure here, but you do kind of, you see through it. You you kind of look to see, you see the pond through it, and you also see the, um, we have some steps here also. You look at what is beyond it, as opposed to staring at it in a way that I would be staring at it if I had something like, like for example, um, this, where I had a large, so if I had like a large structure here, and I had my plantings here, and my plantings here, and no matter how beautiful your plants are here, you are always going to end up staring at this thing here in the middle. So that is kind of what we're trying to get away from in, in this design here. And I think that we have accomplished this. Um, and then, you know, if you come in from here, it, it is the same thing. There is that large gazebo. The eye doesn't stay on it for too long. It keeps exploring. It's following the flow of the whole design 
to explore and see what else is there. <laughs>